Well, it started really um, on the Monday night, the 10th of September, um, when um, Simon had flown out to New York. So I spoke to him from his hotel and I was working at Channel 4 at the time. So I'd left that morning and had a whole morning working at Channel 4 and didn't speak to him. It wasn't until about 12 o'clock lunchtime, UK time. Um, and I, when we got back up in Channel 4, my office, every office had a television in it. So I went into my office and there was the television um, with the, bre the breaking news tagline um, moving across the bottom of the screen. And, he, and I looked at the screen and could see that the um, World Trade Center was on fire. So then my work colleague came in, lady called Jane, and she was, have you seen this? And I said, oh yeah, I said, and Simon's in the World Trade Center. She said, oh really? And then as we stood and chatted about the fact that Simon was there, you know, have you tried to call him? Uh, we literally watched as this black dot came across the sky and slammed into the side of the other building and exploded. At that point I started trying to phone Simon but I couldn't get through on his mobile. I tried to phone the office. You hold on to a framework of normality almost in at these moments and so we decided to, I decided that it would be best if we carried on with our HR meeting as I was working human resources. I said well let's just do the meeting because if I go home he won't expect me to be at home so just transfer the phone to me and we'll do the meeting. We talked about training <laughs> all the things we were doing in the department and then my colleague came in and told me that the buildings had collapsed. It was just nothing was the same, nothing was normal and one of my friends came round um, to see what they could do and when we were saying goodbye there was um, uh, the doorbell rang and I answered the door and um, the press were on the doorstep and they, can we talk to Mrs Turner? And I said, oh, I'm Mrs Turner. Please, could you make a comment about your husband's death yesterday in the World Trade Centre? And I just, I hadn't even got to that point. We were still trying to make contact and talking to his company and trying to find out what had happened. So from that day and t right the way through until William was born, I couldn't answer my own door, I couldn't answer my phone and, and it just all spiralled from there, just you know, family liaison officer from the Met Police coming round and being asked to, of his distinguishing mark so if they found him they could identify him and what was he wearing and what did he look like and all this time I'm sitting there being seven months pregnant thinking this isn't how you're supposed to do your maternity leave. Life changed again once William was born because that, by that point um, I was able to create almost a routine and a structure with this little boy who had absolutely no idea what was going on around him. He just wanted to sleep and eat and be loved. From being a London career girl, happily married, setting up a family to suddenly find myself a single parent, widowed at 32. And the, the shock um, was, abs was, it was just terrifying. I, you know, the fear of where I found myself and how all of this happened in this other country for reasons that were not anything to do with us. Um, I, I absolutely could not get my head around where I'd found myself. And the thing that kept coming into my mind as well was, what did I do to deserve this? So I felt a huge responsibility to find a peaceful place with what had happened and the circumstances that I found myself in. And I had no idea how I was going to do that. Um, what I did know was 
a cycle of violence has to stop. And so, so started my journey um, of all I know is that I want to find peace in this circumstance. And so I looked at everything I could lay my hands on because I wanted to understand what are we here for? Why do we do this to each other? Why am I in this situation? How come I deserve to have my partner killed and end up being on my own as a single parent when that wasn't what I wanted in my life? And I found a route which was not what I expected. Um, I was introduced um, by a um, very dear friend to something called Reiki. I started doing this Reiki and thinking, I must be going mad, I, what am I doing? But just knowing nothing else was working, so what did I have to lose? This little boy needed me to be able to handle what had happened and I needed to find a way to do it. The thing that was most interesting for me was um, around other people's reactions to um, my approach to my grief. Our world is actually very black and white and we like to judge um, what people do and why they do it. And one of the big lessons that I learned from my journey following Simon's death was that we can never judge what other people choose to do. For me, forgiveness is about being peaceful. It's about finding an inner peace about the cards that you have been handed in life. It's not necessarily that the pain's gone. It's not necessarily that you know everything's the way it was before it's forgiveness is actually accepting that all of us as individuals contribute to the world in which we live needing to understand why the september 11th attacks were carried out it isn't part of my journey it isn't part it, i don't need to have that understanding to find my own place of peace I think it's um, probably a theoretical understanding of a, almost a macro view of the world, which is, as human beings, we all together are contributing to the things that happen in this world. And therefore, the only thing I can do as an individual is every day is to make choices and to do things that come purely from a place of peace. If I can choose um, a route forward in my life that is about which choice is peaceful, which choice respects others, which choice um, leaves something positive behind, and then if I can help other people to realise that those choices are available too, then the legacy of Simon's death is about that. And that's where the forgiveness lies. Yeah.